If you're not healthy, you're not thriving, and you can't truly level up in your life until you decide to actually start taking care of yourself. So in today's video, I'm talking about six life-changing healthy habits for women, and some of them are ones that you might not expect. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, embrace their womanhood, tap into their divine feminine, and uplevel their lives. So if that's something you want to do, you should consider subscribing and sticking around. So if you want to start actually feeling healthier as a woman, if you want to have happier hormones, if you want to have more energy, if you want to, you know, even get your libido back, then you're in the right place. These habits will absolutely upgrade your life. Now, some of these habits are very female body focused because, you know, as women, our bodies are different than a man's and sometimes we need to support ourselves in our own unique way. So let's just dive on in, but remember that your little daily choices add up. You become what you do. So it's important to choose wisely. So starting with the biggest one, this is a really, really important habit. And this is one of the biggest differences in how we need to support ourselves as women. And that is cycle syncing, embracing our cycle, nurturing our cycle, living in harmony with our cyclical nature instead of fighting against it. This will change your life. It's absolutely crazy to me that girls are not taught this growing up. So here's the thing, right? Men and women have different hormones. We have different hormonal cycles. So men have the same hormones every single day. They have a 24 hour hormone cycle. So you can kind of think of like a man's hormones as like the sun, right? It rises and falls every single day in the exact way. And women's hormones are like the moon. And so that's why some people will call their menstrual cycle, their moon cycle, or their period as their moon time. That's why masculine energy is the sun and feminine energy is the moon. Our hormones are not the same every single day. So instead of having a 24 hour hormonal cycle, we have a 28 day hormonal cycle or however long your menstrual cycle is. And that is a big thing. That means that we are not the same person every day. We do not have the same needs. We do not have the same desires. There are some days where we'll just naturally have more energy. There'll be days where we're naturally more social, better communicators. There'll be days where we're naturally more creative. There'll be days where we're stronger. There'll be days when we're more intuitive. There'll be days where we need more food. There'll be days where intense workouts feel amazing for us and other days where it will totally destroy and deplete us, right? Like that's why sometimes you'll be so energized and so excited to go to that intense kickboxing class and you feel so good doing it. You feel so good after. And then two weeks later, you sign up for the same kickboxing class and you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, oh my God, this sounds terrible. But then let's say you force yourself to go and even during the whole thing and after the whole thing, you're like, wow, I don't feel as good as I did two weeks ago. I don't have that same high. I just kind of feel exhausted. And that's because we change throughout the month. Like I said, our needs, our desires, our strengths are different throughout the month. And that's not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. And actually understanding this and utilizing this knowledge helps us to tap into our full potential as a woman. Okay, so cycle syncing. Let me give you a brief overview of what it is and how to do it. But first, just want to remind you, I do have a cycle syncing playlist. I'll link it up here and also down below. Definitely check that out. Also, if you are even remotely interested in this topic, highly, highly recommend you get the book In the Flow by Alyssa VT. She is kind of like the one who pioneered this topic. She's an expert in it. Definitely a really good book. It will blow your mind. So to understand cycle syncing, you need to understand a woman's hormonal cycle. And so our menstrual cycle actually breaks down into four different phases and they're really easy. So the first phase is the menstrual phase. And that is of course, when we're bleeding, this lasts around like five days or so. The second phase is the follicular phase. This is that time between our period and ovulation. Then the third phase is our ovulatory phase, which is of course when we're ovulating. And then the last phase, which is usually the longest phase is called the luteal phase. And that's the time between ovulation and our next period. So the luteal phase is when you'll experience those PMS symptoms if you have any. And then the cycle just restarts and continues. So how can we sync our life to our cycle? How can we support our cycle and support ourselves by doing this? I'm gonna break it down for you. So first let's talk about the menstrual phase. So in the menstrual phase, your body is already doing a lot of work and your hormones are all at their lowest points. So it's normal to feel a little bit more depleted, a little bit more introverted, a little bit more of a need to want to like stay at home in sweats and watch a movie. It's actually incredibly supportive for us during this time to not push ourselves too hard. Forcing yourself to go to like a hit boot camp style workout class is not doing you any favors. What it's doing is it's just kind of pumping cortisol into your system. It's depleting your body even further. It's 
much better and much healthier to kind of allow yourself to slow down, to relax a little bit, maybe even take off like a few days from exercise if it's not feeling good for you, or to do things that are a little bit more low impact, like a walk around the neighborhood or some yin yoga. These more gentle style movements and activities are so much more beneficial for you and so much more restorative for you at this point in your cycle. Again, if you push yourself too hard at this point in your cycle, you're gonna be really depleting yourself and kind of setting yourself up for failure for the entire month ahead. And during this time, make sure you're eating nutrient dense foods, giving yourself what it needs to replenish. Warm, comforting foods during this time is really good. I know sometimes when we're on our period, we naturally want to grab all of those like processed junky foods. But like I said, our body's doing a lot of work during this time and we really have to be conscious about setting ourselves up for success. Now, a woman's moon time is sacred because this is actually the time in her cycle when she is most in touch with her intuition. Don't ignore it, use it. This isn't the time for action and go, go, go. This is the time for slowing down, getting in touch with yourself, getting in touch with your body, listening to your body, planning out the month ahead, looking back and seeing what worked well last month, what didn't work well last month, what do I need to change going forward? What are my goals for this next month? The menstrual phase is naturally a very introspective time, and that's not a bad thing. If you take the time to slow down, get more in touch with yourself, listen to your intuition, have some extra rest, you will be much more likely to have a better month ahead. So now as we move on to the follicular phase, I think this is like my favorite phase. This is when we start getting our energy back and our like vitality back. We start feeling good. We start to be more outward facing. So we tend to not crave as heavy of foods during this time as we did when we were menstruating. And we also start to enjoy more of those like tougher workouts, especially cardio based workouts, things like running, dancing, biking, things like that. So when a lot of people start new goals, when they start new goals during this phase in their cycle, it tends to go really well for them because they have a lot of energy, a lot of momentum. It's usually a lot easier to stick to those like harder habits. We naturally have more energy. We naturally want to eat a little bit lighter and cleaner. We naturally enjoy working out a little bit more. It's just way easier for us. So take advantage of that energy. This is a great time to support your body with light and vibrant foods. And this is also a great time for cardio based workouts. Like I was saying, if you were to do a cardio based workout when you were on your period, it likely wouldn't feel very good. But as you move into the follicular phase, it feels much better. It feels much more satisfying. It'll feel like you're doing your body good. This is also when your creativity tends to be at its highest, so take advantage of it. Don't waste this creative energy. This is also a great time to push yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit. You know, try new things. In general, we tend to be a little bit more open to new experiences at this time, and it's less stressful for us and more fun for us. Then when you move into the ovulatory phase, again, lighter foods tend to feel really good for us, but this is the time where we can usually handle the most exercise and the most like intense exercise, like, you know, hit classes or like boot camp style classes. As women, we should not be doing those types of workouts all throughout the month. You know, every single day, every month, that is really, really depleting for us. But at this point in our cycle, at this phase, our body loves it. And this is an amazing time to really focus on building up your strength and your fitness. Another huge strength of this phase is that this is the time in our cycle when we are naturally the best communicators and the best in like social situations with social networking and all that. We also tend to be the most magnetic romantically. So again, these are important to know. We need to utilize these strengths. Utilize your feminine magnetism during this time. And the last phase is the luteal phase. So you start to move from a very outward phase Phase, the ovulatory phase to another inward phase, the luteal phase. So fun fact about this phase, our bodies actually require more food during this time. Our bodies have a higher caloric need during this time. So when you think about that time, you know, you feel like you're PMSing before your period, you want to eat a lot more food. There's actually a reason behind it. That's because we need more food and we shouldn't be depriving ourselves of nutrition and food. Feed your body, nourish your body, and start shifting your food back to more like warmer comforting foods and more complex carbs. Now, when it comes to workouts during this time, your body naturally kind 
kind of gravitates from those more intense workouts, more, you know, endurance based workouts, really intense workouts to more lighter, low impact type of workouts. And we tend to crave more gentle and gentle workouts as our period gets closer. That's totally normal. That's supportive when we do this. We should be listening to our bodies. So if you want to support yourself as a woman during this time, if you want to be healthy, back off on the intensity a little bit and transition to more slower, low impact type of things like weight training or Pilates or yoga or bar. Those are all really amazing. But again, don't think it's bad if you feel like you need to be more gentle once your period is about to come. And also during this time, we kind of have a bit of a desire to get more organized to be a little bit more detail oriented, to wrap things up, to wrap projects up. So take time to do that, but allow yourself to start being more chill during this time because this is what your body craves and what your body needs. And then this whole cycle will start all over again. I know that's a lot of info. I do actually have a blog post on this topic where I actually have infographics for like each phase in your cycle and things like that about like what to eat or how to work out, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So if this is something that you want to dive into, definitely recommend going to that blog post, downloading those infographics to your phone or like pinning them to your Pinterest so that you'll always have them so you can reference them when you want to. As women, we are not the same every single day and we have to stop treating ourselves like we are. The way that we become truly healthy, truly vibrant, truly fit as women is by supporting our cycles, leaning into it, being more gentle when we need to. We're not meant to live like a man we're meant to learn to live like a woman. Now, the next super important healthy habit for women, and I did briefly touch on this when I was talking about cycle syncing, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into the topic of workouts and this whole concept of like, you never regret a workout. Um, I think you absolutely can. There have been many times where I have regretted a workout where I was like, whoa, that was way too intense. And now I feel like garbage. And one thing that's really important that we make sure we don't do is overdoing our workouts. It can actually be really, really damaging for us. As women, we are biologically designed to be more sensitive, more sensitive to stress, more sensitive to change. This was an evolutionary advantage to us. Our body was able to pick up on these stressors and then be like, oh, you know what? I don't think this is the best time to conceive a child right now. I'm gonna shut that down for a little bit, right? Because when you conceive a child in healthy circumstances, that child is more likely to thrive and then for them to have children and so on and so on, right? Natural selection. But so often when women decide they wanna get healthy, you know, they get super serious about their fitness, which is great. You know, activity and movement is obviously super healthy, super beneficial for you, but they'll be so intense about it where they'll think, okay, I need to go to Barry's boot camp six times a week. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling. It doesn't matter if I just got my period. I have to go six times a week. As women, especially women of childbearing age, we have to allow ourselves to be more gentle. Intensity is not how the female body thrives. I'm not saying don't work out and don't move your body. I'm just saying we need to be listening to our bodies more. If you only slept five hours and had a super stressful day at work, and then you come back, you're feeling exhausted, you're feeling depleted, but then you force yourself to do like an hour long, really tough workout, do you really think that that's the best thing for you? Or maybe would a Epsom salt bath in an early bedtime be better for you? I think in general, we tend to know the answer. Exercise is a stress on our body. And even though it's something that we're actively choosing, it's still a stress on our body. And again, our bodies and our hormones do not respond well to lots and lots of stress. That's not how we thrive. And truthfully, that's not how we look our best either. And what happens a lot of times when women decide that they want to be super intense about their workouts, you know, six times a week, no matter what, is that it might feel good in the short term, like initially, it might feel really good for them because it's kind of pumping up their cortisol and their adrenaline. And in the short term, that tends to feel good and exciting and energizing. But over the long term, once you start doing this for a year, you will feel the consequences of this. You will feel depleted and burnt out. It can actually cause us to gain weight. It can cause us to have lower energy, low mood, things like anxiety and depression. It can cause us to lose our hair. It can cause us to have our periods become really painful. It can even cause us to like miss or lose our periods. These are very real consequences of the female body being burnt out and pushed too hard. And it's super dangerous. If you start cycle syncing your workouts, you know, ramping up the intensity during the phases of 
of your cycle, when you have more energy, when you can withstand more of that physical stress, and then being more gentle on yourselves when you feel like you need to, you will see and feel benefits. We aren't meant to do the same type of workout every single day like men often do. That's not how we optimally thrive. Do not be afraid to cut down on your intensity or to switch more of those like intense workouts to lighter things like, you know, yoga or Pilates. Not that those things can't be hard because they totally are, but you know what I mean, like long walks in nature or sometimes even opting out of a workout entirely if you know that your body needs more rest. Your body will thank you. Before we move into the next habit, a special thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring this video and supporting this community. Green Chef is a CCO of Certified Organic Meal Kit Company that makes it super easy to make clean and delicious meals at home. You basically pick which meals you want. They send all the ingredients right to your doorstep so you don't have to do any grocery shopping. All the ingredients are already pre-portioned. All of the sauces are already pre-made. So it makes it really quick and easy on busy weeknights. They're actually the first organic certified company in the meal kit category. And if you watch my videos before, you might know that I try to eat organic whenever I can. And that's something that's pretty important to me. One of my favorite meals I got recently were these tropical teriyaki sockeye salmon bowls. It was so good. It had wild salmon with rice, mangoes, cabbage slaw, sriracha aioli, and pickled ginger. And it was beyond easy to follow the instructions. And it was just so, so delicious. They have options for every lifestyle. So whether you like to eat paleo or vegan, vegetarian, keto, gluten-free, Mediterranean, they've got stuff and they also have a fast and fit option as well as a new protein packed meal choice as well for people who are looking for more protein in their meals. Green Chef is great because they save you a bunch of time by doing the meal planning, the grocery shopping, and even a lot of the prep work that goes into the meals week after week. Plus they have an always changing variety of easy to follow recipes, which means that there's always something new to try so you won't get bored. You can use my code JillsGaren60 to get 60% off plus free shipping and go to greenchef.com for more details. Thank you Green Chef and let's get back into it. So next healthy habit. Another really common thing that I see or I hear when women try to like be really healthy and you know, get more fit, all of that is they focus a lot on like meal portion sizes and things like that. And of course that's not inherently a bad thing, but so often so many women will not eat enough food. And this is actually way more common than you think. They're forcing themselves into these super restrictive low calorie diets and that will not make you healthy. I've seen some videos where some women will talk about, you know, like what they eat in a day and things like that. And they'll eat like 1200 calories in a day. And that is absolutely absurd. That is like the caloric needs of a toddler. Super restrictive diets do not work. And you know what happens when you do them? You totally mess up your metabolism. Your hormones and your body are only happy and healthy when you actually get enough food and get enough nutrients. I saw this other video one time and I have not forgotten it because when I saw it, it literally made my jaw drop. And it was this woman who was talking about how when she tried to eat healthy, she did lose weight, but that was the worst that she's ever felt in her entire life. And then she proceeds to say that her eating healthy was just making sure that she ate under 1200 calories a day. I was like, do people actually think that that is healthy? That is dangerous. Of course she felt like crap only eating that much. I think I would literally die. I've always been someone who eats like quite a lot of food, like not too much food, but not a little amount of food either. And I've never done any like restrictive diets or anything like that. And I honestly think that is part of the reason, not the whole reason for sure, but part of the reason why I don't struggle with like weight management as much as I hear other women. Obviously there is totally a genetic component to us as well as like I do naturally eat pretty clean and healthy. So obviously those things do help. But like I said, these restrictive diets, they wreck your metabolism and your body will feel the consequences of that for a while. And if you do that sort of restrictive diet for a long time, it can start to put your body in like a famine state and it feels like it needs to hold on to any fat that it can in an effort to protect you. You know, maybe there's not going to be food in the future, so we need to hold on to as much fat as we can. And so yeah, your metabolism can get really hit by this. Now, obviously this can be reversed as well. You know, once you start taking care of yourself and really treating your body right, then your body can learn. But these super restrictive diets and not eating enough food, it sets us up and it starts this whole life journey of constantly struggling and stressing about food. Women aren't meant to eat like little birds. We aren't meant to have a snack of just five almonds. We need food. We need real meals. Obviously, I'm not saying that we need to stuff ourselves. I'm just saying that there's a balance. Like with working out, 
there's a balance that we need to have. Working out more is not always better. It's the same with food. Eating less is not always better. What matters is what you eat, the quality of the food that you eat. Restrictive diets are not the answer to getting healthy or to getting fit. Not eating enough food causes you to lose your vibrancy and your vitality and your fertility and your magnetism. There's so many health issues that can develop when we eat too little for too long. And again, in the luteal phase in our cycle and usually in the menstrual phase as well, we naturally need more calories. We need more food and it's okay to listen to our body and honor this. I promise you that if you just start focusing on eating more natural foods, either foods that grew from the earth or lived on the earth, your health will drastically improve and you won't really need to worry about portion sizes anymore. You'll just start eating what you need. Now let's talk about sleep, another big aspect of health. We all know how important sleep is, but I'm just going to start off this section by playing a video, a TikTok video that I stitched on my TikTok by this uh, man named Dr. Patrick Flynn. Why do women need more sleep than men? Oh, they need dramatically more sleep than men. I can always say this. A man can get away with seven to eight hours. Sometimes you need six. I don't encourage six. But the idea is a woman needs eight to ten hours. And the key is what's called hormonal reserves. See, if you think of it this way, women depend so much on their adrenals to produce even daily hormones. A man does not. Men can produce maybe two, three percent of their adrenals and 97 percent, 90 percent is produced by the testicles. Testicles work if you're sleeping or not, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of funny saying that. Women need a certain adrenal reserve of hormone being produced to create their whole anabolics. Women need a lot more sleep than men. Women need uninterrupted sleep. Men can get away because a lot of their vitality, a lot of their repair is done by testosterone. It's mainly made by the testicle. Yes, there is a small amount and maybe a small amount can do it that way. But I'll tell you right now, men need a lot less uh, sleep than women and women need good sleep between eight and 10 hours to create the hormone reserves for them to have a great day. We need more sleep than men. That's just the reality. On average, we need more sleep than men, but it's pretty rare that we actually give ourselves the sleep that we need. There's been this huge trend for years. You've probably seen it on YouTube, but like, you know, like my 5 a.m. morning routine, waking up at 5 a.m. every day, waking up at 4 a.m. every day. And it's become this kind of like cool thing to wake up super early. And that's like the only way that we can be productive as human beings is by waking up at 5 a.m. If you're waking up at 5 a.m., that means that you have to be asleep, not just in bed, but asleep by like at least 9 p.m., ideally 8 p.m. And I mean, it's possible, but that's pretty early. It's just that so many women are forcing themselves to wake up at 5 a.m. every day when they go to bed at like 10.30 or 11 or even later, because that's what it means to be a productive person. That's what it means to be a healthy person. But one of the best habits you can have to be truly healthy is to let yourself get some freaking sleep and to not feel guilty about it and to not feel guilty if you feel like you need more sleep than your boyfriend or your husband or your dad. I personally don't wake up that early. Early. And that might change in the future one day, you know, especially if I have kids one day, I feel like that will probably change at least a little bit. But as of right now, I'm not trying to like become this morning person when it just feels totally unnatural to me. And it doesn't make me feel very good. I feel a lot healthier and happier when I just let myself sleep. And really all that matters is that you use the time you are awake wisely. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Sleep is so, so important. You can't just skimp on this and think that you're still going to be healthy and balanced and feel really good. It just doesn't work that way and it's not going to happen. It's okay and healthy to prioritize your sleep. There's a really big difference between being just like lazy and undisciplined versus listening to your body and being smart with your body. It's not always a good idea to push through. That's not how anybody thrives, but that is especially not how the female body thrives. Another super amazing habit for women to be healthy this is one that just feels really, really good and is super, super easy. Anyone can do this. So every morning when you wake up, first thing, get outside and expose your eyeballs to the natural light. Like first thing right after waking up for like 10 to 15 minutes if you can, doesn't have to be like two hours, but even if it's just like two minutes, this will still really help. Dr. Andrew Hupperman is a huge fan of this. He's talked about this all the time on his podcast. I'm sure he has a ton of episodes about it. I mean, a lot of people are huge fans of this and there's so much research that shows how this one tiny little habit can have massive effects on both your brain and your body. So when you wake up, go outside. Doesn't matter if it's cloudy, doesn't matter if it's cold, just go outside and expose yourself and your eyes to the natural light. Don't wear sunglasses, don't look through a window, it's not the same effect. Obviously don't stare into the sun or anything, but let your eyes just kind of like gaze for a little bit. You can even go for like a 10 minute walk in the morning too, that's usually how I like to do it. So the reason why this is such a good habit is one, it 
wakes you up. It gets you going for the day. It actually causes your cortisol to rise in the morning, which cortisol, you know, you might think like, oh, that's a bad thing. We don't want that. That's a stress hormone. But actually our cortisol is supposed to rise during the day when there's sunlight and it's supposed to drop at night when the sun goes away. But so often our cortisol is kind of messed up. So our cortisol is not rising as much as it should in the morning. And then at night it's higher than it's supposed to be and it messes up our sleep and everything. But so just getting that sunlight in the morning will really wake you up and get that energy going. Doing this also really helps your sleep a ton. And we just talked about how important sleep is, but if you struggle with like insomnia or anxiety at night, or just, you know, kind of have a hard time falling asleep sometimes, this can definitely help you. It also helps your mood and it helps your immune system. I love doing this. It feels good. It's easy. It's a nice way to wake up. It's definitely a habit you should consider implementing. Next habit that will make a major difference in your health is just getting outside in nature every day or even grounding every day if you can, which means just basically putting your bare feet on the earth. Nature dramatically improves our well-being. You know, there's study after study on this. And so often what we do in our day is we wake up, we get in the car, we drive to work, we sit at work inside all day, and then we drive to the gym, and then we work out inside, and then we drive home, and then we eat dinner inside, and then we fall asleep. We're basically inside all day. We have no fresh air, no sunshine, no hearing the birds chirping, and we all wonder why we feel a little bit anxious and a little bit stressed out and unhappy sometimes. Human beings need time outdoors. Nature is an incredible tool for regulating the nervous system and healing. Obviously nature is good for everyone, but something that's super important for women and for our hormones is being able to regulate our nervous system, having a calm nervous system and nature is a very powerful way to do this. If you find that you get anxious, you stress a lot, you're in your head a lot, and this affects your mental health, and then this kind of trickles down to your physical health, you need to start getting outside every day. It's kind of a non-negotiable. Stress and chronically elevated cortisol and a chronically dysregulated nervous system destroys our body and our hormones. We aren't meant to live like workhorses. We aren't meant to be indoors under fluorescent lights every single day. It goes against our natural biology. And grounding, or some people call it earthing, is super powerful. Powerful. It's basically where you make bodily contact with the earth. And so it's usually just through your feet, like standing barefoot on the grass or the dirt or the sand, you know, like natural surfaces. And it allows you to basically transfer the free electrons from the earth into your body. And it's one of the best things for inflammation. And it helps us to feel more emotionally grounded as well. There's a ton of science on this. You can Google it and read more if you want to. Regulating and calming your nervous system is one of the very best things that you can do for your hormones. And nature and grounding is one of the best ways to do this. So many of these healthy habits are not about ramping up intensity and taking things to the extreme. They're about slowing down, being more gentle with yourself, tuning in with your body, tuning in with nature. And these habits will dramatically improve your life if you do them consistently. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Comment below. And if you are new around here, you should totally subscribe and join the community. Maybe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos from me. Also, you might want to check out this video right here because the YouTube algorithm says that you're going to like it. And the YouTube algorithm is just never wrong. So you got to go watch it. So I will see you over there or I will just see you next time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye.